We back again with yet another exciting episode of the Mind Power Career Talk podcast. I am your host Emmanuel Chisalu, certified career analyst dedicated to helping you find a career pathway that adds value, brings meaning, satisfaction, joy and happiness. And in this segment I am featuring oh my goodness, my great friend Nkandu Mwape Fortune. Now you are going to see from the way we're going to have this conversation. He is a buddy. He is a brother. We've come a long way with him from the days when we were students back at the Copper Belt University to where we are in the corporate world, really making great progress, creating meaningful impact in our respective institutions, and changing the world at large. Nkandu. <laughs> it's a pleasure man to have you on the Mind Power Career Talk podcast. Welcome to the show. Thank thanks a lot Emano. I think it's it, it's it's been a long time coming. You and I have come from a long way. Yeah, yeah, we've, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. talked several times uh -huh, uh -huh. on different issues. Yeah. And I'm excited to to be on the podcast and mm -hmm. looking forward to our conversation. You know, you, I think this conversation really started some time ago last year. Yes. I was like, man, you need to feature on the podcast your career story, your career journey will be a great testament, will be a great inspiration to the young adults. I always told you when I come back to Zambia, you are the <laughs> first guy I'll contact and we're going to make this happen. And you did that and we have made it happen. Now, to begin the ball rolling, look, I know you. I know every detail about your career journey because, hey, man. If it wasn't for you, I don't think I would have been here. I would have been here. You, you played the part, you know, but, but we know you back, you know, from, 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 from CBU um, to where you are right now um, in the United States of America, in New York City. But then, to our listeners, our viewers, who is Nkandu Mwape? In your own words, share with us your background. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll start from the beginning. Yeah, like, yeah. It, I'm born and bred from Kitwe, Copper Belt. Uh -huh. Started my primary school in Indeke, mm. uh, Wesley Yerenda Primary School. Okay. That's a government school. Uh -huh. From there, we moved to Riverside. Uh -huh. I changed schools there, went to Riverside uh, uh, School. Uh -huh. uh, I did my high school at Kito Boys. KB. KB, the, the famous, famous Kido Boys. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the, the, yeah. famous, the famous Kido Boys uh -huh. High School. Obviously famous for the bad things as well as the good things. Yeah. Obviously yeah. everyone has heard about the bad things most bad likely. Things, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's a brilliant school. Uh, produced yeah. a lot of great, great, great people in this country. Uh, -huh. uh that's that's where my journey started. Okay. So from from Kido Boys. Mm -hmm. Went to Cobra Belt University where I met a brilliant young man. Mr. Okafo Jr. from Choma. Okafo <laughs> Jr. from Choma. <laughs> Shared our stories. Yeah. Great stories. Uh, Good times at CBU. Yeah. Four years. Uh, first year, second year yeah. together. Yeah. Then we switched into different fields, went yeah. into accounting. But of course, we used to meet for. We, we used to meet in different. Yeah, certain courses. courses yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was a great journey there yeah. at, at CBU. Mm. Uh, got the best student award in second year. Uh, was offered a Bank of Scholar, Bank of Zambia scholarship. scholarship. Yeah. And that was my turning point. Like, Initially, when I when I went to CBU, I wanted to do BBA. Yeah, yeah. I remember very <laughs> yes, well. We I told that you, conversation. I told, I told you I wanted to do BBA. Yeah. But yeah. then after the second year results came out, uh -huh. I received a call from from the dean of students that you've been offered the Bank of Zambia, Zambia scholarship. scholarship. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, uh, what does that mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> it means you need to do accounting. Accounting. <laughs> I was like, oh my 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 journey here is to do BBA. BBA, yeah. So can I still get the scholarship and still do BBA? They were like, no, you need to do accounting. So I had to think about it. Yeah. I was like... Like it was imposed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> should I go into accounting uh -huh. or should I maintain what I wanted to do, which is BBA? Yeah. Uh, but after some sports, obviously the money was good as well. So I was like, yeah. who would make such a silly decision? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, you were, you were like living our dream. Like, oh my God, Kandu is on Bank of yeah. Zambia scholarship, earning so much. And yeah. then us, we're struggling, waiting. Shine, Gina, shine. 
yeah. those were funny times. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I decided, no, let me try out this accounting thing. Uh-huh. Um, that's where like my accounting career really started, and I started getting interested in the accounting field. Yeah. Uh, third year, fourth year, continued with uh, good performance. Mm. Uh, no, don't say good. Say great performance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Great performance. Yeah, yeah, graduated yeah. with a distinction mm. in accounting, uh, which is uh, a rare thing. I think it's a great achievement. Mm. Proud of that up to this time. Yeah, yeah. never shy to talk about that yeah. because it's, and, and, it's, a, it's a great achievement. Very proud of you all the way up to now. Yeah. After graduating with a distinction, my thoughts were okay. I need to get into academia. I need mm. to lecture. I need to do all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but before graduating, obviously, the big four firms came to the campus, mm. recruited the best students, mm. and I was given an offer by KPMG, yeah. uh, which is a global firm. Yeah. So I, I accepted the offer because, mm. obviously, I, I still wanted to go into academia. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I applied uh, at Coba Belt University to be... What do they call that? Uh, de- yes. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Staff Development Fellow. Yeah. So I applied for that. Um, made a few follow-ups. CBU didn't come through, uh, so I started working with KPMG. What the hell did they miss <laughs> on uh, such a resourceful person like you? Started, uh, yeah. I was like, no matter what, I'll push for that. Yeah. Then got into the the big four KPMG. Yeah. Started enjoying the stuff. Um, I, I'll talk about that later. Kep, uh, CBU came back yeah. later on. Like, can we have you for the interview? I I didn't attend the interview, of course, uh, yeah. because at that time my my objectives changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, <laughs> after experiencing <laughs> the work at KPMG yeah. and where I wanted to be mm-hmm. in the the next few years, I was like, I need to change um, perspective. But one thing I wanted to do, mm. regardless of where I am, uh, is to do a master's degree, not from Zambia, mm. but from outside. Yeah. So I started applying for scholarships. Mm. I applied for the road scholarships. Yeah. Road scholarship twice. Mm. Shortlisted. Mm-hmm. Obviously, getting shortlisted is just a big issue as well. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people apply. Mm. I was shortlisted, went for the interviews, wasn't successful. Mm. I was like, I'll keep on pushing. And if you remember very well, I think uh, the first time, I think we did apply. Yes. Together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah. I'll keep pushing. Did the first interview, Rose Scholarship, wasn't successful, got the feedback. I was like, I'm still young. I can try yeah. next year. Applied for the best scholarship. The first time, wasn't selected. Mm. Again, I was like, I still, friends were like, just do a master's from Zambia. I was mm. like, no, I want to go to the UK. To the UK. <laughs> and do my master's from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I kept pushing. Uh, learning from the experiences, apply for the Royal Scholarship again, rejected. I was like, I'm not backing down. Mm-hmm. Like, I need to push, continue pushing. Yeah. Apply for the best scholarship again. The second time, got it, successful. Mm-hmm. That's how I, by that time, I'd done three years with KPMG. Mm-hmm. I decided to, I, I actually approached KPMG asking them if I can get like unpaid leave yeah. because I really enjoyed my time at KPMG. KPMG so I was like, yeah. I need to come back after my master's. My so master's. let's do like a sabbatical leave where yeah. I, I just go for my master's and then I come back. Uh-huh. KPMG was like, oh no, this is not the policy. The policy, we can't do like a sabbatical for one year. Yeah. So I had to make a choice. Do I resign? I resign. Uh-huh. Decide to go to the UK or I continue, continue. with my, my job because yeah. I enjoyed my, my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a tough decision, but I, I said, this is what I always wanted to do. Uh-huh. I wanted to study in the UK yeah. at, at some of the best universities. They, they have some of the best universities. So mm-hmm. I was like, I can't miss an opportunity to be at Leeds. Yeah. So I, I, Leeds take a, University. I, take, I took a tough yeah. decision, resigned, uh-huh. and just decided to go to the UK. Yeah, wow. In the UK, great experience. Uh-huh. Beautiful country. I loved it there. Yeah. Uh, my academic journey there was great. I, I decided to switch. Instead of doing accounting, I was like, oh, before that, by that yeah. time, uh-huh. I'd already completed my SCCA. SCCA. Yeah. Hey, man, you're a tough old man. <laughs> yeah. So by that time, I already completed my SCCA. So yeah. I was like, I've probably done whatever you need to know in accounting. In accounting, yes. Because I've yes. done a bachelor's degree in accounting. Okay. I've done SCCA. 
So and what? Of, and, and of course, the experience at KPMG with experience as a KPMG yeah, was a yeah, plus. So I was yeah, like, yeah, uh, I need value addition. Yeah, what can I do that can add value? Uh, not just doing a masters for the sake of doing a masters. Mm. I needed something to add value to, uh, to to my CV as well as my my career. Yeah. So I decided to go into financial risk management. Financial risk management. Okay. Yeah, so my master's was in financial risk management at the University of Leeds uh -huh. uh, in Leeds City. Uh -huh. uh, great program, high pressured. Yeah. One year, I managed to graduate there with a distinction. Another distinction. <laughs> oh, man, you're a tough one, man. <laughs> you deserve my respect. Uh, I was like, we, yeah. we, we've come so far from CBU. We yeah. need to continue with that. Yeah. Um, so graduated there with a distinction in financial risk management. Mm. Uh, decided to come back to Zambia. Yeah. KPMG approached KPMG. I was like, I'm back, mm. uh, and I would like to continue where KPMG. I left from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. KPMG was receptive. They accepted me. I yeah. went back to KPMG. Yeah. The first thing when when I went back to KPMG was I, I had a chat with uh, one of. Uh, our partners there yeah. about my career and what I wanted to try out. So I, I talked to him about what I studied in the UK ah. and, and and to see if KPMG can help me leverage mm. uh, what I studied there within KPMG network. Yeah. So with his connections, he, he managed to talk to a few partners in South, South Africa mm. um, and secured a secondment for me in Johannesburg in the financial risk management department. So from the UK, you come back to Zambia. Yeah. And then Zambia, you take off to South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great experience. Yeah, that was yeah. my first time being in South Africa. Okay. Uh, it, it, it was it, it was nice. Mm. I, I think that was that was a life, like, changing opportunity. Like, yeah. I got to experience things that were out of my comfort zone. Mm. Something that I used to do during my master's, but yeah. then applying, seeing the real application, application in the industry. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Was, that was exciting. Did my rotation in South Africa, but when I was in South Africa, mm. I realized there's huge opportunities for young people. Mm -hmm. So I decided to think, well, I need to try out. I think I was like, the, the Zambian market is still growing, Yeah, yeah. but I think I can learn a few things from the outside market. Mm. So I started looking at opportunities outside. Yeah. Um, I, I thought of the UK because I enjoyed my time in the UK. Yeah. So I pushed in an application, of course, with KPMG because I used to like the KPMG culture. Yeah. So I pushed in an application, KPMG UK. Mm. Did the first interview with, uh, with KPMG UK. Uh, yeah, they said they'll reach back to me for the second interview. As I was thinking about that, I was like, uh, how about trying out the United States? United States of America, the like, lands of dreams. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was like, I've experienced the UK. It yeah. could be nice to, to see what the Americans do. Yeah. So yeah. I decided, let me try out to, to apply States. to the United States. I yeah. applied, and the Americans are very fast. Mm. Within a few minutes after my application, they reached out, mm. setting up an interview, Within, within few minutes? Yeah. Not few months or a year? <laughs> no, no, no. Wow. So uh, wow. Americans are fast, quick, wow. because they, like, that's their, way, that's their culture. They, they yeah. do things, they need to sort out things quickly. So we did the interviews. First interview was successful. Set up the second interview in, in a week's time. Yeah. Uh, within two weeks, the whole process was done, given an offer. After I received an offer from, from the U.S., then I, called, I got a call back from the U.K. Like, we need to set up the second interview. I was like, too late. It's too late. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sorry. It's too late. It's too late. Uh, I'm, I'm going to... So the initial offer from the U.S. was in San Francisco, California. Okay. Yeah, so I was like, I'm going to California, San Francisco. Mm. Weather, they've told me that the weather there is nice mm. compared to... It's similar to Africa where at least it's not, there's no snow. It's not, and, and, and besides, you believe in the boss life. Yes, so I was like, uh, let me try out some San Francisco. Yeah. Then after a few weeks, they called the, the, the U.S. office called back, uh, telling me that there's an opportunity to, for you to move to New York. New York, wow. New like, York City. I was like, I, I've never, 
dreamt of working in New York City. Uh, but I'm up for the challenge. So uh, let's let's switch from San Francisco to, to, to New York. To New York. So that's how I accepted the offer to join the New York financial services team. Mm. Uh, that was in 2019, yeah. I think around October when I was still in South Africa. Yeah. So I accepted that offer, um, pushed in the resignation with the Zambian office, decided to move to the US. That mm. was a risk because I was moving to a country where I've never been before. Mm. People don't know me. Yeah. Uh, we've watched a lot of things about America and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it was a risk which I was willing to take and I had faith that whatever comes up, I have to succeed. Like I need to, to push in my best and make sure that things go well. Mm. So 2020, actually 2019 New Year, 31st December 2019, my flight to New York, first time in New York. Yeah, the city that there, never sleeps. Straight went to Times Square. I was like, I need to t- to see Times Square. I mean, everyone, <laughs> even me, the time when I'd gone to the United Nations, uh, that was 2019. 20, was, 20, 2019, or, yeah. Yeah, 2019, July. Yes. Yeah, so that was the first point when I arrived in the United States of America in New York. Uh, before I could do I any to, other thing. I need to see the bright lights. <laughs> I need to go to the Times Square. <laughs> Let me see the city that never sleeps. Yeah, so, awesome experience, man. So yeah, I went yeah. to Times Square. I was like, wow, magnificent. Like, mm. nothing I've ever seen before. Mm. Beautiful city, great views. Yeah, I was like, this is a dream from somebody from Kitwe. From Kitwe. <laughs> man. It's, it's a journey. Kitwe, yeah, yeah, yeah. New York, it's it's just it was just a dream, man. Yeah. Uh, and I and I, th- I thank God for that, and I thank like everyone who's helped me through that throughout that journey. Mm. Friends, you guys have been supportive throughout the process. Uh, former workers, those guys mm. have been awesome. Former mentors and stuff like that. Mm. And and we'll talk more about that uh, later on. But I think that was a huge opportunity for me. Wow. Now, yeah. Moving to New York was wasn't that like an easy thing. Obviously, there's a cultural difference, uh, yeah. and then the other thing is United States. And that that was going to be my next question about adapting to cultural shocks. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's different. Experience the cultural shock in the UK, different shock in South Africa, uh-huh. or a new new different level of shocks in in the United States. Yeah. Just the language, the way they speak English is different from the English we're used to. Like you say, yo, man, <laughs> how you doing, buddy? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the, the first yeah. few few months, yeah, yeah. obviously trying to uh, speak the way you speak, mm. the, the, the normal English that we speak, but there's American English. Yeah. Uh, few things, obviously, in, st- in the call when you say schedule, yeah. no one understands you unless you say schedule. Schedule. <laughs> Yeah, instead of saying root, <laughs> you use route. route. So those are the things that yeah. during the meetings you you get to adapt. Yeah, and you just have, you just need to adjust. Uh-huh. Um, over time, obviously, we've adjusted, uh, and that's one like a learning curve. Yeah, you go to a different country, mm. learn their culture, uh, fit in, make sure that you are able to properly maneuver your way around. So it was a great experience. First few years, obviously bumpy, but then uh, got got used to the system. Mm. The other thing we needed to do is uh, get licensed in America. So America uses different standards in terms of accounting. Yeah. Uh, the, the the rest of the world uses international financial reporting standards. Mm. America uses US GAAP. Now, just hold your thought on that. I have learned this. Uh, when you look at, um, say, for instance, just the way Americans do things, they totally want to be different from, from from the others. So even just the appliances that would use. Yes. So, so I was in uh, uh, talking about appliances. Yeah. Uh, when when I checked into the hotel, yeah, I was like, I need to plug in my laptop, uh, check a few emails, and uh, do a few things for work. And I couldn't plug in my, my laptop. Because you are the British. Uh, yeah, the American uh, plug. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, we need a converter to do this. Yeah, so Americans, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. They, they, they they have, it's a whole different world. Like, yeah. it's 
everything is different. So now you are telling me that uh, uh, for you to to to, to practice uh, your, your your accounting, uh, your financial uh, qualifications, so on and so forth, your degree, your ACCA, your master's degree wasn't considered sufficient enough to warrant you as uh, a qualified and educated public accountant. accountant. Public right. accountant. Yeah. right, right. Yeah. So for you to be a public accountant in the United States, you need one, obviously, to pass the United States CPA exams. Mm. And those, the uniform CPA exams, are, they, they, they're made up of four courses, quite all right, but yeah. you need to have a certain number of academic credits to just sit for the exam. Uh. So they, the, the application process is different. So for SCCA, mm. you could graduate from high school, mm. start your SCCA or the CATs, and after the CATs, you can get into SCCA. For the United States, once you graduate from high school, you can do the CPA. Yeah. So you need first to do your degree. Uh-huh. After your degree, your degree will give you, depending on the, how many courses you had, Yeah. The degree will give you at least 120 credits, academic mm. credits, to allow you to sit for the exams. Mm. So, but then it doesn't end there. Once you sit for the exams, pass all the four exams, yeah. you still need to be licensed. Yeah. So, the licensing process is another process. For you to get licensed, mm. you need to have 150 credits, at least in New York State. Mm. So, the state <laughs> gives you a license to practice. Wow. So, in New York State, you need 150 credits. Yeah. So, for me, and I, when I look back, I was like, that's the reason why I did my master's, because yeah. then it allows me, it gave me sufficient credits to get licensed oh, in brilliant. New York. Yeah, brilliant. so my bachelor's plus uh, the, the, master's the master's was enough mm-hmm. to get the license in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got the license and got, got, got the promotion to, to, to manager. Uh, after being licensed, because you can't be a manager without getting the license. So you, you, you are telling me that uh, coming from uh, a humble background, raised in the streets of Kitwe, going to an ordinary uh, government, government school, school, going to an ordinary government university, university. and then uh, a scholarship. scholarship, you end up becoming a manager in the United States of America at KPMG, New, New York, York City. Financial services, yeah, Man, that's that's massive. That's that that's awesome. That's brilliant. Congratulations. No, thanks, man. Um, it's 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 been a great great journey. Mm. Uh, when I look back, I never imagined that I'll be one day. Uh, yeah, be a manager in New York, New, New York. York City. Yeah, um, uh, it's been it's been on a, an awesome journey. No, 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 my pet. No, make make me understand. I know, I know that. I, um, in Europe, of course, we have our, our mates Chikwete and Bucci, and of course, those guys. I think you know the, the, the finally settled in those places. But just talking, uh, tapping from your own experience, you know, being in uh, United States of America in New York, uh, I know that that place is very competitive. People are always busy to make things happen. So now, for you to ascend to the managerial level as a black child coming from a least developed nation, Zambia. And of course, we're, we're making strides. You know, we're very happy that with, uh, with a new government in place, it's giving us hope that somehow Zambia is going to, you know... Uh, yeah, go up there. Go and up be, and uh, become a great nation. Yeah. But looking at the current status, and then you make it in the United States of America, what did it take for you to become a manager? It's... Uh, it's a it's a combination of uh, a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, one obviously is focus. Uh-huh. Um, knowing that you are in a different country, mm. obviously you, you need to push in the time to make sure that you you get things done. Uh, Americans believe in getting things done. Mm. So for things to be done, you need to push in the time mm. and making sure that the clients are satisfied you meet the deadlines yeah. Yeah. so obviously it requires a lot of uh time invested mm. some of my weekends were disturbed mm. but i knew what i wanted to to achieve at the end of the day yeah. uh, obviously family time 
I'll, I would not answer your call, man. I was like, uh, uh, I'm busy I'm trying busy. to <laughs> <laughs> trying to sort myself out uh, yeah, yeah. here. I'll, I'll probably call you at a later time, but it, it, it requires focus, hard work, as well as you need to have mentors, mm. uh, people who fight for you, mentors mm. as well as sponsors. Mm. Those guys who, if you're not in the boardroom, yeah. They'll vouch for you. They'll vouch for you. Yeah. Which is very important. Very, that's a very important thing. You need mm-hmm. people that to speak on your behalf without you being in the meeting. Yeah. And, and and obviously they'll speak on your behalf because they, they know the things that you can do. So that's 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 the combination of things that helped me get to that level. Like it's it's the people in New York. Yeah. My mentors, my bosses, uh the hard work. And just making sure that you stay focused on on what you want to achieve. Yeah. And now talking about that, which is very brilliant. So now being a manager, it means that you're managing a diverse team. All right. So you. Yeah. And, uh, uh, how, how does that feel? First of all, tell us about your team composition, the people that you manage. So it's a it's a it's a KPMG New York is very diverse. So mm. you have people from Asia. Mm. You have people from. Uh, Europe, yeah. you have the Americans, obviously, uh-huh. and then you have African Americans, uh-huh. you have uh, Africans yeah. who are based there as well. So my team is diverse. Uh, on on a normal day, obviously, to have maybe a combination of uh, black people, white people, Asians, mm. all all the different types of individuals you find them at KPMG New York. Yeah. So uh, at at first it was something that was out of my comfort zone because mm. I was used in KPMG Zambia to see a lot of black folks. Yeah, <laughs> the black folks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. moving to New York uh, uh, was, was was a bit of a shock yeah. where you probably working with mostly Caucasians um, mm. and obviously Asians and other other minority groups. But, and, and, that, and that's a beauty because you get to learn from different people you get to hear stories uh-huh. from different individuals yeah their background people from japan korea tokyo uh, mention any country you find them in new york city yes yeah. and that's the kind of opportunity mm. that you only experience in a place like new york city where yeah. you tap into people's cultures yeah. how they do things yeah. they explain their backgrounds and stuff like that so it was it, uh, strange at the beginning but got i've gotten used to it <laughs> and and it's somehow yeah. fun because you get to learn a lot from 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 different people from from different people yeah so uh how many years um o- of course i can hear it but um how many months how many years uh, should we give you um, before you completely change your accent <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I I don't think I'll probably change my accent. Yeah. Um, I, I I'll probably change, and I'll probably change the few things. I, yeah. In terms of, instead of using British English, I'll probably use more American. Yeah. But like yesterday, I remember I was at a restaurant. Instead of asking for for a bill, I asked for a check. For a check. Because <laughs> <laughs> Americans don't. <laughs> If you tell them I want my bill, yeah, they won't understand yeah. unless you tell them, uh, "Can I get a check?" Can I get a check? Yeah. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's where you say, "Please, waiter, can I have my bill?" So when I told the the guy, yeah, yeah, "Can yeah. I get my check?" He was like, "What? What check?" Because uh-huh. the check obviously was thinking bank deposit checks. Bank deposit, and stuff. I know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, forgot! <laughs> I, I forgot that I'm mm. I'm back home. Uh, can I get the bill?" And he gave me the bill. So probably my accent won't change, but. I'll probably be using more of American English than than the, the, the British or the Zambian. Now, talking about the work environment, okay? Yeah, you you've experienced uh, the work environment here in Zambia. You've experienced the work environment in uh, South Africa, and of course, uh, you spending one year in the yeah. UK for your studies. Yeah. Of course, you had the combination both of studies and also a uh, corporate experience. Yeah. So, where you are currently, um, how? Competitive is a work environment as compared to, for instance, here back at home. Uh, it's a that's a good question, Emmanuel. Mm. Uh, it's a uh, 
being just being with KPMG mm. for so long you could tell that the culture the KPMG culture is almost similar yeah but then you realize when you're in New York mm. that the the pace of things mm. how they do things like it's different like it's yeah. uh it's a fast paced world mm. uh very aggressive uh very competitive so you need to to step up um and also push in a lot of time mm. um so it's a, it's a, it's a it's a crazy environment very highly competitive energetic mm. you have young folks who brilliant chaps i worked with like a lot of brilliant chaps uh i i i, I somehow look at them i was like when i was my in my first year mm. at kpmg I, i didn't have such charisma and confidence that these yeah. these young chaps have yeah and 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 I, i think that somehow disadvantages us zambians from our humble being and stuff yeah. like that uh, americans are taught to be uh more aggressive more competent yeah. more more confident yeah than 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 the humble backgrounds that we preach in in, in Zambia yeah. so it <laughs> was a, it, it was, <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a strange thing yeah. uh which which I'm trying still trying to adjust and yeah. making sure that I, I I get to that level where mm. you you stop being so humble and yeah and get you step up to the occasion yeah. you are competitive aggressive yeah so yeah. it's a it's a learning curve um I think every process has stages. Yeah. And and you get and that's the brilliant of being exposed to different cultures because you learn a lot and uh, and you can adapt and change mm-hmm. um accord, according to the situation and obviously that's that's for your benefit as well. Yeah. Um because you acquire different skills. Mm-hmm. Americans are good at project management. Um mm-hmm. they they want things to get done. Yeah. So if you have an issue set up a meeting let's discuss let's yeah. sort this out what's the way forward who's going to do this who's going to handle this mm. let's let's find a way forward and sort this thing out so um yeah, it's it's it, it's a fast paced environment that I can't lie mm. but again the the experience you get from there is 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 unreal and much uh I, i i i always say uh there is there is there is new york city and then there is the rest of america because <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just a different world out there yeah. um and and you need to step up uh to to be at your best so to to be at your best all right so now uh nkando uh, when we look at the essential skills that are relevant in your field what are some of those skills that young people who are aspiring Uh, to be where you are or not exactly where you are but just to compete globally yeah yeah, yeah. what are those essential skills that are in demand that's, in your that, field that, that's a good that's a good question and i always say this i think communication uh-huh. skill is one of the best skills that you need to survive mm. out there of course academic skills are very important um you need obviously the qualifications and everything yeah the technical knowledge you need to research mm. but other important skills are communication communication project management project management how do you manage several tasks mm. how do you prioritize mm. what is important what needs to be done now yeah. what can be done in the next two days and how do you handle your boss how do you manage your uh, subordinates yeah uh, so it's a skill that's that's very important mm-hmm. wherever you go i think you need to know how to effectively communicate yeah. and 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 also how to manage one the project and the people you work with yeah. yeah because the people in most organizations drive the organization so the organization will be successful because of the people yeah human resource is what drives mm-hmm. uh an organization mm. so you need to make sure that you you coach in your your staff mm. 
you're motivating your staff, mm. you're mentoring them to take over from you because you won't be there for a long time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And making sure that um, they they have the knowledge mm-hmm. to take over. If you're gone today, somebody can come in and and and, and step in and mm-hmm. make sure that the job gets done. So those are the very important skills that I can say you need to survive out there uh, in the corporate world especially in, in, in a place like uh, New York. So mm. you you really need to step up and make sure that you acquire those skills. The other skill that I can't forget is technological skills. Being technological savvy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're moving into a, a, a different time or generation where tech, if you lag behind in terms of tech, mm. you won't be relevant. Mm, mm. The way we're doing our audits has changed significantly from the past five years or ten years ago. Back then, when you had the room full of papers, papers, papers yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Now yeah, now everything is online, uh, standardized, utilizing a big data, big data, yeah. and using all these tools such as Autrix, Power BI, uh, uh, advanced Excel mm. formulas, and stuff like that. And when talking about Excel, thank you so much back um, CBU second year when you saved us from Mike Marley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that was uh, uh, that was an experience I don't uh, want to relive. <laughs> anyway, let's forget about the past. <laughs> let's carry on. <laughs> so uh, yeah. those skills are very important. I, I, imagine a task that you used to spend eight hours on can be done within one hour because mm. of the use of technology, technology big yeah. data, and all these analytical tools. Mm. So that's where we're moving, and we need people to, to get upscaled in terms of being able to use these new tools that are coming up to handle big data. Yeah. Uh, and that's one skill I can't, uh, I can't avoid to mention because mm. five years from now, yeah. if you don't have that skill, I think you'll probably be irrelevant irrelevant in in, in in most of the industries. Actually kicked out of the system. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um as we wind down the conversation, I know, I know you're a very busy man. Yeah. So it, it, it has been very difficult to catch you. <laughs> but I said uh, look, I need to catch this man and finally I have you. And um now let me just bring you a little bit backwards on your journey to where you are. So how did you prepare yourself for such a time as this? As a young boy growing up in Kitwe, going to that primary school, uh, Kitwe boys through to the university. Sorry, I mean, Copper Brought University. I was almost saying University of Zambia. <laughs> Copper Brought University. Um, what sort of career guidance experience did you have which enabled you to be the best version of yourself today? That's 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 uh, that's a very good question, Emma, and I think that's that's where mind power comes in. Yeah. Because um, my my journey, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, wasn't determined on uh, wasn't based on any career guidance. Mm. It was based on the things that I've seen. Yeah. And the things that I want to be because I've seen someone being. Uh, a business administrator or a business manager who yeah. I look up to. Yeah. So I I wanted to be like them. Mm. Uh, at some point when I was in high school, I wanted to do chemical engineering. Mm. And then all that turned around again to start thinking of business admin. Never thought of accounting until uh, the point that we've discussed. Mm. A- a- and that's where I feel mind power can really help the next generation to start thinking about their careers from an early, early stage. Mm. Um, I was I was lucky enough to end up in a field that I enjoy, yeah. which is accounting. Accounting. <laughs> Playing with the numbers. Playing with the numbers uh, yeah. and, and, and finance as well. So yeah. I, 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 I'm probably not the, um, the, the ideal person to, to talk about the guidance because I, I don't think I experienced much of that guidance. I remember in um, when I was in high school at Kido Boys, we had a career guidance teacher. Yeah. But I never stepped foot in that office. 
<laughs> so I never stepped yeah. foot in that office yeah. and everything that I ended up being was based on my judgment and what experience experiences, exposure, exposure yeah. that I've seen. So if your exposure is um, is limited, yeah. then your guidance also I think will be limited. Will be limited. So you can only become what you exposed <laughs> what to. What you exposed to, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's I think that's where we need to pr- probably bridge the gap and 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 make sure that we we have our young young folks get guided and uh, into into the right path. Yeah, yeah. So so, so now based based on your journey and what you're experiencing at a global level, okay? Uh, what do we have to do then now to prepare these young adults uh, dream big um, you know the Zambian dream is always limited yeah yeah but but just to to open up their minds and experience the world of so many different possibilities yeah so I think one thing we need to do and and, and I think it needs to start from from an early stage yeah is we need to let young people uh, be independent like think broadly mm. Let's not think of the Zambian market. Yeah. The world is becoming global. Yeah. So let's think of the global market. Yeah. What can I do that will impact the world? Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm interested in a fashion and design, mm-hmm. let me not be limited because people in Zambia are not making money out of fashion and design. So think big. Like I'm, I'm not thinking of Zambia. I'm thinking of designing things in the US in the UK yeah. and, and and stuff like that so let's allow obviously people to mm. uh, to think broadly and, and that will involve obviously parents allowing children to make their own decision not being based on being a medical doctor the Zambian dream yeah <laughs> medical doctor engineering yeah. a lawyer or accountant no yeah let's allow them to be free thinkers i think um mm. Pursuing something that they they they, they want to do. I remember when I was when I was growing up, uh, I, I used to enjoy playing football. So yeah. when when I'm playing football, I used to be uh, like got carried away, yeah. forgotten about the curfews, end up yeah. coming home yeah. late, yeah. <laughs> and and your parents would be like, "You're not paying attention to, to, school. to school. You're just yeah. focusing on." Uh, Perhaps this time would have been the Messi's, the Ronaldo's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, it's it's such things that yeah. we need to. A real look at and 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 obviously rethink, but again, it also needs government intervention in terms of creating opportunities for young people to to pursue all these different Career things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's not something that needs to be done by one person. We need uh, different parties to come together, draw up a plan, see how they can help different individuals pursue their dreams and. Mm-hmm. And it, it might take us time, but I think it's something that can be achieved uh, with with an objective and an agenda or uh, set set goals that that we need to uh, to write down and give ourselves a time frame to, time to frame. achieve them. Yeah, to, to, to achieve them. I love that response. And um, as we shut it down, I know our viewers, our listeners, they are inspired with your career journey, more especially the young adults, the pupils in schools. Um, here in your journey, which has just been all distinctions. <laughs> and so now they're asking themselves a the question, <clears throat> how can I set myself apart to be a high performer, to be a high achiever? Uh, what fundamentals do I have to put in place so that I'm an exceptional, I do well in school, pursue my dream career, and become the person that I was designed to be? Yeah, that's a that's a very good question. I think... It requires a lot of things. Um, one, obviously, dedication, mm-hmm. put in the time, mm-hmm. but also don't forget about the other important things, yeah. which life is not always about school. Yeah. So you need to uh, set yourself apart, like after school, what next? Mm-hmm. So you need to th- start thinking of the things, the extra skills that will help you um, stand out. Mm-hmm. You can have six distinctions yeah. uh, in in a class, yeah. but then when you go out there in the market, mm-hmm. what will set you apart? Quite all right, you've gotten all s- distinctions, right? Yes, 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 yes. But then, what other extra things were you doing at school? Yeah. 
where you know, I, I remember Emmanuel, you were in the debate club, um, electro yeah, electro commission. I was all over. <laughs> Those are the other things that yeah. will set you apart. You yeah. see, when yeah. you when you go to an interview, they'll be like, this guy is able to multitask. Yes. And able to do several things at the same time, get exposed to mm -hmm. leadership, managing people, all those extra skills that come with extra responsibilities. You yeah. get the point. Yeah, yeah. So young people need to, in as much as you're pushing in the time in school. To get a distinction. Get a distinction. Yeah. That should be on your target. Uh -huh. um, start thinking of, other things that you you're interested in, of course. Yeah. Uh, that would build your soft skills. That would build your soft skills, yeah, interacting with people, yeah. communicating with people, Absolutely. different people from different backgrounds, and mm -hmm. and all that that good stuff. So, yeah. I think when I when I when I look back at, at my at my journey, I remember we participated in that Sima Global Business yeah, Challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're active in Zika yeah. and and all that. Uh, playing football at school and stuff like that. So it's it's a combination of even different, the, even those group discussions. Yeah, but that was project that's management. project management. Yeah, yeah. yeah. how yeah. to in, that, the communication, project management, management, all those things. Yeah, come to play when you join the industry now because yeah. those are things. Once you enter KPMG, nobody cares about your distinction, distinction now because yeah. you have a guy with a distinction, you have a guy you with a credit yeah. or a silent. Uh, who've made it and now you need to compete on a different level. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to remind people that you have a distinction, but your distinction needs to show yeah. in the type of work you're doing, you're doing and yeah. how you interact with people. So it's, it, it's a combination of a lot of things, uh, skills that you need to learn yeah. when, when you're a young chap and making sure that you, you grow those skills as you uh, develop in your, in your career. Wow. Kind of fortune mapper. Uh, thank you very much. And um, something whispered in my ears <laughs> as um, as as your final and uh, closing remarks. Um, I know the graduates right now who are already at KPMG, PwC, you know the big four, yeah. even just any other company or organization who are aspiring to work at a global stage. What advice do you have for them? Um, that's a that's a nice question, uh, and uh, and I think young folks needs to needs to believe in themselves. One, yeah. um, they need to think big. Mm -hmm. um, they, they they need to. It's I, I always say this global world is full of opportunities, mm -hmm. and it's the people who want them. Yeah. will get those opportunities. Yeah. If you sit down, uh, if I go back to my application for my bed scholarship, mm. it requires investment, time investment. Yeah, That's what young folks don't want to do. They want, I've, I've, I've received LinkedIn messages from young folks asking me, I want to study in the UK, yeah. but they don't want to push in the time to do the, the application the process application and everything, and the interviews. Yeah. So it's, you need to invest your time uh, appropriately, mm -hmm. making sure that e e every good thing doesn't come easy. Mm -hmm. So you need to push in the time. Yeah. Um, don't feel shy to get advice from the people who've walked that path. Yeah. So reach out to Emmanuel. No, Emmanuel, I saw you. Uh, at the United States uh, UN offices. Mm. How did you get there? Mm. I, I also want to be at Howard University or Washington or Harvard University or I, I, I want to experience this. Yeah. So look out for people who've experienced that and they'll guide you through the process. Mm. So I, if I were to give an advice to, to young folks right now, I would say um, find mentors. Mm -hmm. People who can guide you. Yeah, very important. Very important. Uh, find people who can give you advice on how to navigate certain things. Like Zambia has produced a, a lot of brilliant chaps. Yeah. 
like mention anything that has ever been done i think there's always someone who's done it before, before or someone who's gone a similar path yes so reach out don't feel shy to reach out to to a big person people are very happy to help you yeah but you fail to reach out so reach yeah. out to myself i always respond when somebody reaches out to me on yeah. linkedin how do you get the scholarship how did you get your job in the us yeah. like i'll guide you through the process yeah. so always feel free to reach out work hard making sure you have all the requisite skills that you need to to succeed yeah. and and stay in focus ladies and gentlemen uh, that was mwape kandu fortune um, kandu fortune mwape whichever it is <laughs> <laughs> we still maintain uh, those names very excited to have hosted such a brilliant young man um young man that we've known way back from the copper belt university through the corporate world doing a great thing as a young determined zambian who's making great footprints at the global stage please do reach out leave us a comment you need uh, mentorship you need help in whatsoever things that you are doing with regards to your career planning and development at mind power career services we're always there to help you. Until next time, I'm your host Emmanuel Chisalo. Goodbye and ciao ciao. Thank you. <laughs>